Yes, everybody, how is it going today? I hope you're having a splendiferous day. I don't even know what splendiferous means, but I'm gonna have it anyway. Today, we're interviewing the amazing, inspirational Vanessa. Vanessa's a 13-year-old girl. Can you believe that? She is a 13-year-old girl, and she has done so much already. She's actually been on the TEDx stage. She has spoken to so many different celebrities, uh, famous for on uh, Spider-Man movies, the recent ones, as well as people on Lion King, which is so amazing. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm just gonna wave to a few people. Um, and we are going to be going live with Vanessa in a second. And she's absolutely fantastic, absolutely fantastic. She, I'm so buzzing to have her on. Um, she's got an incredibly motivational mother as well in order to help, and speaking of mother, rising superstar is right just here. Uh, hey everybody, how's it going? Um, I am just super, super excited to have her on. And oh, here we go, here we go. Where is she? Is she here? Yes, she is. I'm gonna. I'm so excited. 13 year old girl achieving so much. Over 6,000 subscribers on YouTube and a glowy TikTok account. Here she Hi. is. Yes. <laughs> girl, are you good? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am absolutely amazing and even more amazing because I've now got the pleasure of your company. And I think people oh. <laughs> like you are so inspirational. I love it. It's so cool. That people Thank always think, you. Well, people always say that, oh, your, your role model is, um, your role model should be older than you or more or this. Well, absolutely not. My role model models are the kids going through what they're going through. Vanessa, I do not want to be a kid in this day and age with all the social media going out there. You're living it. I really am. I, I really am. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us today. I think it's thank so cool. Thank you for cool. having me. Um, well, it's, it's an absolute pleasure. Any noises you hear in the background, it will be this guy here. This is Oswald. Cook. Oh, so I love been... dogs. <laughs> well, well, he's been a bit of a monkey today, so I don't <laughs> think you like him too much. But <laughs> we'll see. Um, I've done a bit of a background, not a background check, but I have seen that you are hitting 6,000 subscribers on, on YouTube. You've got a glowing TikTok. Um, you've been on a TEDx stage, which is one of my passions. I know it's a 60 second one, but even still that is so yeah. cool. <laughs> like, a my, like a mystery speaker. And to be fair, I think that's really hard. In fact, it's harder than speaking on a big stage, a giant stage, mm. you know, um, with with all with 20 minutes. I think it's so much more harder because you've got all yeah. that time to speak. But with 60 seconds, you're thinking, like, oh. And it wasn't planned either. They were like, oh, so if you would like to come on the stage, because we're just going to give a few people the opportunities. I was like, first, first come, first serve. And I was literally like, I am not prepared. And I was, I could, I could, like, watching the video, I can kind of see myself shaking on stage just because I didn't know what exactly was going to come up my mouth but i guess the experience definitely definitely worth it massively and it, i'm a confidence coach and i always think you cannot get confidence without riding the fear way you, you just can't do it very true yeah and and you absolutely stretched your comfort zone by by going forward and applying for that what so but there must have been a bit of doubt inside your head that said well vanessa no no no, no. <laughs> how, how, how do you um, deal with it um, I think especially at the um, TEDx um, event, um, I was just kind of writing down a bit of like some bullet points for the speech. Um, I would usually do that if I was going to speak at an event beforehand, um, but I think the doubt was definitely there because it was a very big like stage, it's a very big platform and obviously it was one of my dreams to actually hopefully in the future do a proper um, TEDx talk like the the full presentation and actually have it planned out and structured properly um so I think the doubt was definitely there um I don't really get nervous that much anymore when I do go on stage um I think just because I'm so used to it or the atmosphere is just kind of going over like my nerves so I think the doubt was definitely there but I had to kind of bring myself together and just just do it because the opportunity was obviously amazing it was right there in front of me so it, it would be quite silly to obviously not take it I think so <laughs> I think so I, uh, totally when I um I did something well it's like it's like you know that's something so you're so passionate about and if you don't take that chance and just let it slip through your fingers mm. you're going to kick yourself forever you're going to very kick true <laughs> very you're true um, and it's you are a very controversial being. Can I just throw that out there? You are a very really? controversial being. Here's why. Here's why. Because you are a 13 year old girl, 
um, that is not doing what 13 year old girls should <laughs> be doing. Yeah. You know, and um, I don't mean to put a sex on it, you know, with girls and boys and stuff, but you just, well, it's true, you are, you're a 13 year old girl. Um, and it's so cool and so refreshing to see that you are really stretching your comfort zone, doing scary stuff. Speaking of the state, this is number one fear in, in American England, isn't it? it? Is. Who's doing it? I think it's around the globe. Anyway, people would rather die than do public speaking. <laughs> so, well, is that, it's a real statistic. Um, yes. So if you look up on Google and it's kind of like the biggest fear, public speaking is there like before death. And I was like, people would really rather die than speak on stage in front of people. So I think that was probably very shocking when I first found that out. But many people don't really know that. But in a way, if you think about it, it's quite understandable for most for most individuals <laughs> yeah and, that, and that's the thing i want to highlight in this call as well that the, the fact that the reason why people are afraid of speaking in front of people is because they have a huge fear of judgment it's innate in us there's a fear of yeah. failure <laughs> even fear of success which is a sneaky one and then the fear of judgment as well um uh of fear of rejection so those combined fear of judgment and fear of rejection that is really that's a very primal response inside of our brain you know, we're hunter and gatherers, we're a big tribe, we've got to stay together our tribe and um, And what's amazing that I see in you is that you are slap bang at the beginning of your social phase, psychologically speaking, the social phase of your life, which means you should be going out there and wanting to fit in, um, be with the in crowd. I keep, I'm doing that a lot today, I'm gonna stop doing that. Uh, be, be, be with the in crowd and um, want to please the people at the expense of your own happiness. But Vanessa, you ain't doing that. Why? I'm just why? different. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm happy about it, but why? <laughs> um, I think it's mainly because of the influence my mum has had over me because when she started her like personal development journey, um, that's when I started going to um, events. It's literally always just been me and my mum because she's a single parent. So um, she wouldn't want to get like a babysitter every single time she went to an event on the weekends. So I would go with her. Um, I wouldn't be like, in the audience listening to what they were saying. I would probably be like in the corner watching something on my iPad, but I didn't realize that I was subconsciously taking in all that different knowledge. Um, so I think when I started to go to more events and actually learn to understand what's actually going on, and what motivational speaking is um yeah i just think it really made an influence on me and so many other kids obviously wouldn't have that same opportunity to go to different events i think that's partly just because of the support i've gotten and where i've been going um but obviously i am still a normal teenager at the end of the day i'm kind of removing youtube and social media and motivational speaking I still do go through the same mental health problems as any other ordinary teenager would. I still do get nervous, I still do get stressed, so I am still a human being. Um, so at times, or if I'm at school, everyone's like, oh, you must be so popular because you have a YouTube channel and everything. I'm like, I'm really not. I'm probably the most introverted person at school, like, unless I'm like my best friend or like we're in a friendship group and I'll just kind of be bubbly around you. Otherwise, I'm just kind of there to get on with my work and then just go home and just continue doing inspiring Vanessa. So um, I think I'm still very normal at the end of the day, although obviously the things that I do are not ordinary, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said that. First of all, shout out to Mama Bear. Hey, Mom, if you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and secondly, yeah, I guess you don't do ordinary things. Now, I. You may or may not know I'm a confidence coach for kids, and my big thing is to is to help them find their reason to be confident on this planet, to to live their passion and purpose. Um, because you're only you know believe believe what you want to believe, but if you're only here once, and for you to say that you only do ordinary things, I think if I think I would like to put an extra in front of you for ordinary <laughs> for doing Thank extraordinary. You. <laughs> well, you, you are you doing extraordinary things, and and it's like. You started off doing an extraordinary thing, which is just like, you know, a young kid going to a, a personal development seminar, which accident or not, whatever, you know, take it or leave it. But the very fact that you pushed forward and carried on going, you had a choice of either being like, mm, forget it, meh, or be like, actually, this, I've got something from this guy or girl, yeah. I'm going to use that. 
Um, and, and look where it's led you. It's led you to one of you, me to one of your heroes, um, <laughs> um, who I really love. I think she was amazing on Great Showman and Spider-Man. I'm a huge Spider fan. Um, yeah, speaking to uh, <laughs> speaking to people on Lion King as well, and you do the red carpet stuff. And um, oh gosh, it's, if you if you didn't do that, it's almost as if if you didn't choose. I, I think we all make choices in our life. And if we didn't choose, where would we be? And, and if you didn't choose to think, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that, then where would you be right now? It's probably not worth thinking about, but you, you're riding the wave and it's so cool. So what has been your biggest, coolest event so far after doing this journey? Not, not event, more like experience. Um, before I answer your question, it's kind of like, think about it, all the different decisions that you've done or all the choices you've made have led you up to this very moment and it's insane because you think about if I didn't make this choice I never would have met this person I never would have been doing this so it always comes down to that choice whether do I follow my dreams or do I just kind of continue doing what I would be doing like any other um, kid would but um, I'm so grateful that I have the opportunities that I have to um, obviously go to the different events especially at like the red carpet events and meet different celebrities and interview people because that's obviously my passion um, I love speaking to new people and kind of hearing their perspective on different things that's why I love being a presenter and being a host um, but I think my favorite experience hmm, uh, I mean there are so many um, but I think my favorite experience um, or maybe most memorable you can say is when I went to um, well I'm gonna kind of say a joint one but it's when I went to the um, premiere of the house in the clock in its walls um, and then I went to um, the Lion King premiere last year as well and the first one we went to I wasn't interviewing there but it was like my first time actually being on like Getty Images because we I, I could see my face on the paper the people who are obviously um, part of the staff and you could kind of see all the celebrities that were coming there and I could see my face on there it was insane it was so surreal um so to kind of be there around all these other influences or celebrities um I think was just crazy I would never have thought that would have happened um and then when I went to the Lion King premiere we went there with the voice newspaper um I went there with my friend Callum Daniel shout out to Callum um, and he is the um, CEO of iCode Robots, so he helps kids code robots. The first time I met him, I was like, how on earth do you do that? Um, so we were hosting, or not hosting, sorry, we were um, interviewing some of the celebrities that were there. Um, and then we also saw like a snippet of Beyonce in the same like venue as us in Leicester Square. She didn't actually walk um, around all the press, but I can still tell people that I was technically in the same place as Beyonce. So I think that would be always a very big thing for me to say to other people. And we also um, saw Harry and Meghan and they were um, like taking photos with some fans. So there were some incredible guests that were there. So I think that's probably one of the most memorable moments. Otherwise, every single experience that I get, um, meeting people, interviewing people is always going to be something for me to remember and look back on. Yeah, they're so, so cool, so cool. <laughs> um, and it's, I think a lot of the times kids, kids your age, tend to get in their own way. Um, do you know what I mean by that? Yeah. Yeah, and and I, again, I, I don't know how you feel about this, but I think maybe that's a choice, getting in your own way. Whether it's choosing to believe what bullies say about you, or choosing to believe what he or she, or fake friends, I've done it again, sorry, fake friends say about you, um, but what would your, first of all, if you don't mind me asking this question, have you ever experienced that kind of like bullying um, and, and fake friends, like emotional vampires, and if so, sorry. I'd love that, emotional awesome. vampires, that's the phrase I'm going to use next time we talk about fake friends. <laughs> Do it, you can do it. Well, if you think about it, they're not vampires, aren't they? They don't suck blood, they suck emotion. Vampires uh, with no humanity. The people who watch the Vampire Diaries will understand my reference. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and they're dead inside as well, aren't they? You know, you know that, that sort of thing. They need a boost up. Um, and they think they get a boost up by bringing people down. Mm. Mm. They're definitely not. So have you ever had that experience? And if you have, what would you say that helped you cope with it and get through it? 
Um, so when I first started doing motivational speaking, um, I got my award in the first year I was doing it. So um, oh. that was at the back to back awards. Yeah, and it was amazing because it was like the first time I felt like truly recognized for what I was doing because my platform obviously wasn't where it is now. Um, and I hadn't reached that many people yet. So for me to kind of get recognized for doing speaking um, in my like first year of doing speaking was amazing. Um, so then um, my mum was like, why don't we kind of share this to your school? Because if there's ever an event you need to go to during school, we're going to have to tell them what you do. And I was like, fair enough, because you always need to get permission from the school um, to let them know, because then you obviously do like homework or they give you work to do to kind of fill in so you don't miss out a bunch of different lessons. Um, but when I told my primary school at the time, um, they were really supportive of it. So then I did like two assemblies or like presentations in front of like my whole school in year six. And to be honest, probably one of the most nerve wracking things I've ever done because I find it so much easier to speak in front of adults than kids because young people, we're brutally honest. Like if you're doing something bad or like your speech isn't going well, some I'm gonna hear a smirk and my whole focus is gonna be like, like, on something else so um it was quite nerve-wracking if i'm being honest because it was all my friends kind of hearing about uh, my award and my youtube channel um but after that um lots of kids or lots of my friends went back and they were like oh so i want to have a youtube channel now or they were just inspired by what i was doing so i think that was really impactful um but obviously after that you do always get a mixed reaction from people you do get the people who support you and you do get the people who just don't really understand what I do simply because they may not have been raised the same way or they just don't see how it works and that's understandable um, but I think maybe two weeks after or maybe a week after I, w I did my presentation for the first time um, I started to get these um, hate comments on my YouTube videos and then later on I realised it was someone from my school in my class um, yeah so I think it was really like it just really changed like the way I thought um although it was a really hurtful experience for me at like 10 years old to kind of go through that with my mum and I was like why are these people not liking me because I know that I have good intentions of what I'm doing so although it was quite hurtful and it was really difficult to get through that um I'm grateful that I did go through it because otherwise I wouldn't have kind of learnt from that experience um I think the way I overcame that kind of sudden bullying part of my um, journey or part of my um, career or social media life, um, I definitely think was trying to understand that although um, you kind of do what you love and you're still helping other people, people aren't always going to support you, people aren't always going to like you. And I think for me to realise that um, was really powerful because when I used to go to events, it was like, well, if you do do if you do what you love and you're very passionate, then everybody's gonna like you, everybody's gonna support you. And I was like, okay. So if I go to school and I tell everyone what I'm doing and everybody's inspired, then obviously nobody's gonna nobody's gonna dislike me. So when I started to get those hate comments, it was like I don't understand. I was completely confused. So I think for me to go through that kind of learning curve, I think was really important and really crucial. So Yes, I have been sub really before. Um, I don't get that many hate comments on my videos anymore. Um, if they do come up, I either reply back to them with kindness or we just remove them because other people could be seeing that and I don't want that kind of negative influence to be on my channel because we're all good vibes on my channel and on my social media platforms. But yes, I have been bullied online before. Was it a good experience? Absolutely not. But did I learn from it? Yes. I love that so much. You're so so raw i love that thank, thank you, so you. <laughs> no, this, and that's a great thing you're so you're real you're, you're just a real person and thank you. With, with real emotions and i think it's so important to have those real emotions um well what i say to people and because i was bullied quite severely when i was growing up uh physically i was i was a tackle bag <laughs> in the uh, for a rugby tackle bag in the in the in the playground at lunchtime i just had to stand there and be tackled like by the whole rugby team. Oh no. <laughs> it wasn't very good. I got strong for it though. Um, and what, so if it's comments like that on a YouTube channel or TikTok or whatever it may be, for somebody to sit there and watch your whole video and then do a this sign and then 
take their own precious time, which mm. they're never going to get back, that five minutes or uh, seven minute video, and that it, take, it took five minutes to, to eloquently put how to put someone down who's actually living their passion and trying to do good in the world or great in the world. Mm. So you go, like, my, the old me used to get like, whoa, you know, really want to battle them. I think that's because that's the masculine part of me. Mm. Maybe, I don't know. Um, but now, I, like you just said, with kindness, and not even kill them with kindness. I don't want to kill someone with kindness. It's like the opposite of what I want to do. Yeah. Genuinely, if somebody's upset, if someone's writing that, I'm like, well, you know, dude, you've, you've taken a lot of time to write this. Um, I'm sorry that I, I, I that you're choosing to feel upset by this. If there's anything I can do, just let me know. If I can like do another video on this and stuff, then, then that'd be great. I'll, I'll you know, because yeah. you've you're never going to get that life that's those seconds back so you're obviously going through a lot of pain and i always think this vanessa i always say hurt people hurt people or at least try to yeah. so th that's what i think and it, and that that little mindset tweak has made me think actually i'm not going to be attached to that emotional vampire nurse i'm going to be like you know how can i how <laughs> yeah. can i how can I cure you? What can we do? There's an anti yeah. vampire serum that we can use. I don't yeah, know. I mean, like killing people with kindness or just kind of impacting them with kindness, you can say. Killing with yeah. kindness is probably maybe not the best phrase to use, but <laughs> it's still it still works um, in the same way. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of like you never know what people are going through behind doors and what you were saying, hurt people do hurt people or at least aim to um, hurt others. And I think when people just kind of decide to um, give them the attention, I think that's all they need. And I don't think they've really understood that just saying something nice to someone is still gonna give them the same attention as if they were writing a hate comment on someone's videos um, or someone's photo. Um, but I think I got like a message on Instagram. Somebody messaged me like, you're ugly. So then I replied back and I was like, thank you so much. <laughs> and I think like a day later or 24 hours Aww. later. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> and then I think like a day later, um, the person was like, oh, um, I'm sorry I said that to you. And I was like, it's okay. If you ever need anything, any, any advice, then I'm always here. If you're gonna obviously start being kind towards me because I'm not gonna, Treat, give you kindness back if you're obviously not constantly kind of working towards being nice to me as well but it's always just kind of like giving them that opportunity and reminding them that although what they're going through that you that there's somebody there that you may not even know personally is still going to be there to kind of hear what you have to say and actually listen which i think is really important so just to kind of add on what you were saying no i really appreciate that yeah absolutely it's so strange, isn't it, when we do get that first comment, I tend to think of it as just like, oh, I'm being successful. Yes, I've got a, I've got a hater. This is, I, what, what I'm saying is yeah. in some way. Um, and I, th I think that's really, really, really cool just to have an, a, an awareness of your own emotions. So as not to let anyone else dictate what you say, because mm -hmm. an instigator's reward is a reaction. That, 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 and, and if you reacted, guess what? Yes, they've got you. They've got you eating out the palm of their hand. So if you to say that, it's very astute. It's very, 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 very cool. Um, I, I do, the, I do the same thing. I just, uh, you know, ah, oh, you know, whatever. Thank you. Um, on stage, you do a bit where it's me versus a kid, and I get them to bully me, and then I bully back. Yeah, it's true. It, it, it's, it's actually, oh, no. not, but it's quite brutal. Um, and they, <laughs> and they bully me back, and I bully them, and da 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 da, da and the. the because kids are so much more smarter than me when it comes to like, you know, throwing hate um, or being quite as stupid. Those <laughs> roasts. Yeah. yeah, the roasts. People can really cuss you out nowadays, if I'm oh, being honest. They were getting me for my skinny ankles, they were getting me for my hair, they said I had a ginger beard, and they said, it's not ginger, it's Moroccan sunset, okay? And there's nothing wrong with being ginger anyway, okay? I'm just saying. Um, and they were, they were going to town on me, and I was going back and stuff, and then he won. He, he or she won every single time, but when they said da da da, and I was just like, oh, thank you, that's very, very sweet. You know, what, you've got a load, you've got great cups. So, you know, what do you do? Mm. I'm like, oh, and it puts them off. When you be mm. kind, it stops their negative flow, which sounds a little bit like woo, but it's so true. It's so true. So um, yeah, I love the way you said that. That's awesome. Now, um, what I was going to ask you as well is. Um, 
what sort of this is a bit of a random question actually but what sort of 25 year old do you want to be i know wow. I, I, i'm sorry um, i went there i went there I, <laughs> no it's fine think about it. <laughs> <laughs> um hmm what kind of 25 year old do i want to be yeah um financially stable <laughs> <laughs> but, then, um, why not? but yeah. Why not, um, Vanessa? That's a great one. Let's keep that one. We'll cycle back to that. What else? Yeah. Um. I mean, obviously, I still want to be doing social media and Karen doing motivational speaking. Hmm. Um. Hopefully, being a successful presenter on different programs. Perhaps have my own like show that I'm hosting, or you know, like the different shows you have, like CBBC. And yeah. then you have a bunch of presenters around and just kind of interview people. It's just very fun. I could kind of envision myself doing something like that. Maybe not exactly at 25, but along the line um, yeah. in the future. Um, and hopefully being in TV shows or movies, because um, I love acting. Um, and I'd love to be in something. Um, whether that just means starting off in short films and going up um, to bigger films, but I definitely want to be a part or be in the acting industry and be yeah. successful in that as well. Um, but otherwise, I can just kind of see myself as a 25 year old being responsible, hopefully, oh, fingers crossed, and um, hopefully traveling around the world. Obviously, not right now because of the coronavirus, but traveling around the world and um, kind of meeting new people. I love that. That's great. That you, so, so much variance in that. It's, it's, <laughs> 25 year old you won't have the time to be 26 you'll be too, too good <laughs> in that that's so cool and i love that i love the, the fact that you said traveling because that's one of my values is freedom um so when this first started i'm not going to lie to you i'm going to be open and honest when it first started two weeks in i was just like ah this is terrible i like going out i like coaching people i want to go flying over there i want to go over here i want to go over there and I just couldn't do it. You know that we couldn't do that. But now it's like you know, you kind of this is the new normal. You kind of getting used to it, um, which makes me have so much gratitude and thank towards the things that we take for granted every single day. Um, so I love that. That's that's awesome. Um, I you know I don't I don't know if you should be responsible. You know, you know what you know. I mean, I'm pretty responsible right now, so I think those <laughs> morals will kind of stay with me when I'm older. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and you've got your own show anyway, haven't you? Which is awesome. Yes, I do. <laughs> and uh, we'll, 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 we'll shout this one out. You've got The V Show, which is a new YouTube channel that you've started, which is sounds um, very cool. Well, we meet, it's a channel with me and my mum. We don't mm -hmm. post on it as consistently anymore, but we mm -hmm. had it like maybe two years ago we started it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's it's actually quite, well, I wouldn't really say it's an old channel, but it's not exactly like brand new. But I, I hopefully you. we'll be posting more videos on there when we do have time to do that in quarantine if we're not busy doing yeah. everything else. <laughs> yeah, quarantine videos. Seems the in thing at the moment, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, you do, and you do have your own show anyway. And what you do is, well, and Prime, Amazon Prime. What, what the fudge? Tell me about that. <laughs> um, What's that about? Yeah, so I've always wanted to have a show, um, whether it just be on like an online platform like Amazon Prime or like actually on television. Um, so when or like during my journey, me and my mum have always always been extremely close. Obviously, before I did speaking as well, but we've always been extremely close, and she's always like worked hard towards kind of helping me um like making my dreams come true basically so when i kind of gave her or when i kind of said to her what well, i would love to have my own show and she already kind of knew that and um, she'd already see myself being on a tv show and kind of having my own show and hosting that and um, so obviously because of my age i am 13 years old but i started when i was nine so for me having to go for those four years gradually getting older and still kind of getting either lots of opportunities or not getting any. Um, but I feel like I've been very misled over the years by various different people. It's just kind of like lots of promises to kind of give you the world and it's never really delivered to you. Um, so me and my mum just kind of came to terms with it and was like, well, if the, if the opportunity doesn't come to us, then we're gonna make it ourselves. We're gonna create the opportunity for ourselves and that way we can get more opportunities from our hard work. Um, so when we just kind of decided to put the show together, um, she was like, okay, well, 
what if we kind of pitch this and do it for Amazon Prime? And I was like, let's give it a go. And then obviously now it's fully on this and people look up on it or they type in my name, it does come up. So it's just amazing. And we've already gotten so much great feedback from it. Um, yeah, I just think it was an amazing opportunity and it's just an amazing accomplishment. I just to kind of see yeah. my mum and I's hard work really like show. Um, I actually have something written down what the show is basically about. For those who aren't watching it already, you should probably start watching it now. We have um, three episodes that are currently on there, so you can go and check those out. But the show, or the inspiring thing as the show, um, introduces motivational individuals that share their journeys and the most important lessons. The show is aimed to help inspire young people and give them the opportunity to learn valuable knowledge that will help them pursue their goals and aspirations. I think it is crucial to use my platform as a way to spread awareness of global issues. Um, the viewers can watch the guests' perspective and their opinions. Um, in my opinion, I think the show is the perfect place um, to educate and inspire the next generation. So hopefully that's kind of intriguing everyone. And um, yeah, if you go to Amazon Prime, type in Inspiring Vanessa or The Inspiring Vanessa Show, it will come up, you'll be able to watch some inspiring interviews on there. That is amazing, and I'm inspired. I'm, 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 <laughs> Thank I'm, you. I'm curious. I want to I see what that is. And I think that's a good life skill, actually, be having curiosity. Um, if, if you didn't even have that, you might not have said, well, you know what, oh, it's not really false promises, curious. I wonder what we can do, Mum. I wonder what we can mm. do. Obviously, part of that would be a huge work ethic, which is what you've obviously injected. And you, you, what, did you pitch to Amazon Prime or did you just say, hey, hey guys, I've got this idea, get me in? Um, it's kind of confidential, but it was oh, quite a okay, process, sorry. but it, it's definitely worth it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it wasn't between your curious and your hard work ethic. Um, and you know what? I think you've got to have some sort of form of courage or confidence to, because you must have had doubt thoughts, you must have had rejection thoughts, you must have had thoughts like, oh, you know what, they're not going to, we're not going to get on there. Da, 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 da. Um, but you override them you overrode them and just did it anyway mm. yeah so that's, um that's... yeah i don't think i had many doubts because i was oh, always good. doing or <laughs> luckily it's very different to how i'd usually feel about different things but and um, because i was always been posting interviews on my youtube channel or on social media and i've always gotten quite positive feedback from all of it um i don't think i had many kind of doubts about it um, I was kind of going to I was ready to um, accept the setback if obviously it didn't go on Amazon Prime because mm. there would be an opportunity that would come um, later on but I think it was just kind of learning to understand um, what could happen and what couldn't happen not to get my hopes up um, too far in um, but I don't think I had that much doubt about it because even doing like the interviews now, like this, an Instagram live interview um, on, um, obviously on Instagram um, and doing that in quarantine, I've gotten lots of, lots of good feedback from it and people just kind of, that was really great. So in a way I kind of see myself like, hopefully in the year's time, people want to be interviewed in my show. I don't have to contact them they'll be contacting me, can I be on your platform kind of thing. So that's the kind of goal I'm trying to reach that the interviews are going to really like, that's going to be, that's going to make people feel comfortable. It's going to be a safe place for you to kind of share who you are. And um, so I think having or having the idea of putting this show on Amazon Prime um, didn't really come as a, as a massive kind of doubt for me. It just kind of was seen as something that could be something to obviously take me closer to my goals. Cool. Okay, that's awesome. That's a lot. Mm, stepping stone, or I don't know, step in the right direction. Pretty cool stepping yeah. stone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's so cool. Um, and do you prefer to be interviewed or the interviewee? What should, what do you prefer? Hmm. Um. I really don't know because I love both. Okay. Um, it's kind of like I'd love to, I love interviewing others and I also love being interviewed. I would love to be behind the camera or be in front of the camera. So um, it's kind of like a mix of both. Um, like some interviews I've done when the person kind of asked me these incredible questions or maybe it's like a really close friend of mine just kind of 
just kind of um, like giving off the same kind of energy and just like really giving it our all. And I think that's like one of the most, like my favorite type of interviews, just because the questions are really good. And also the person, you can just kind of tell who they are as a person. And that's always making me feel comfortable to kind of speak my truth, you can say. Um, but then again, I love talking to other people and hearing about their parts of their journey, because obviously I know what my journey is, but I may not know you. So I'd love to know what you do. Um, so I don't really know. I don't know which one I prefer. I just think I like both of them. And you know what? You can have them. It's not greed at all. You just <laughs> know what? Have them both. It's, it's good. And that's, that's brilliant because I'm the, I'm the same. If somebody asked me that question, I'd be like, well, both really, because A, I like talking about myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but I genuinely think that my story um, helps people. Why? Because I've got experience of that firsthand. Um, and and I love finding out information about people and what makes them tick and what, what helps nurture their mind. And, and what is it that really gets, gets them thriving on this planet? Because we're only here once and you know this world is a delicate place as we know right now what we're going through um so what is it that, that these amazing people you, like yourself could do um to to help push that nurture that in in the in a promising direction uh so yeah both perfect absolutely perfect yeah, both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um brilliant so you said you're 25 year old self amazing so it sounds to me like you do want your own show which you've already got but maybe you've got on a bit more of a bigger platform um you do want to go on a tedx talk or a ted talk yeah <laughs> which sounds super cool what would your topic be about um hmm. because of the ted talks it's like when you apply to um when you apply to actually do the ted talk it's kind of like the topic needs to be really unique mm. So even though my first thing I would want to talk about is like confidence, Yeah. not everybody would want to click on that or me talking about confidence as a 13 year old, even though it could be something people would want to watch, it wouldn't be like the prime or like the best thing to talk about. So I'd probably like talk about mental health or something along those lines. Um, or just something that I think is going to be really different, but also going to be as impactful as me talking about anything else I would talk about at any other event. So I'm not exactly sure, but something along the lines of like mindset and mental health. Cool. I like that. Cool. Um, so the reason why I'm doing this for is because of the Young Legacy League. So I've got my Young Legacy series um, and you were my second speaker, which is amazing. Thank you very much. Ooh, very Thank excited. You. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you for coming along. Um, so, what would you, what, hmm, well, how can I put this? What would your uh, future self thank you for now? What would your future self thank you for, would you say? Very good question, by the way. Um, hmm. Uh,. I really don't know, I've never been asked that question before. What would my future self thank me for what I'm doing now? Do you know what? I love that you're taking time to think about it because <laughs> some, some people just splurge out and it's and it's it's, it's rushed. Um, but you've got the confidence to just chill and just take it in. So, and that, you know, so yeah, um, don't ask me that question because I haven't thought about it either. So it's all down to you, I'm putting the pressure on you. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm not too sure. Maybe it'll just kind of be like, keeping like my friends close to me or the people who support me close to me um because in the future i feel like those people that i still talk to now or that i'm extremely close with i'll still be really good friends with them in like 20 years time and that for me to kind of say that with complete like confidence really says something because i just kind of thought they've always been there for me i've always been there for them so I think my future self will be very grateful that I've kind of kept those people close rather than the um, emotionless vampires close to me and the people who would just rather kind of leave me on the side where I can kind of help me um, move forward. And um, so probably the people, who, my, my supporters, my friends, my family members, or just the people who I know will always support me no matter what I do. Um, I think that will probably be the biggest thing that I thought my future self would be the most grateful for otherwise i'm not too sure <laughs> yeah 
I like that because I, I believe you are the average of the five people you hang around with the most. And if they're inspiring, if, I mean, if you want, you were talking about finances before, if you want to be rich or whatever rich means, if you want to be a millionaire, you've got to hang out with millionaires. Period. You've got you to do. hang out with, you've got to hang out with, yeah, that's it, done. If you want to be an actor, you've got to hang out with actors or you've mm. got to yeah. hang out with inspiring actors, you know, if, and, and the same with the other way around. If you, if you hang out with smokers, it's only a matter of time before you turn into a smoker. Mm. Very so, true. Choose, yeah. yeah. Choose who you want. Choose wisely who you want to share your breaths with, and and celebrate those successes with. And um, because if they're they if they're promising, if they're kind and nice, then they're going to be with you for a long time, mm -hmm. regardless of anything. Because they're a uh, reflection of you. Yeah. Oh, massively, massively. <laughs> and some friend, some fake friends can be quite sneaky because that some friends want you to do well, but not too well. You know? True, yeah. I understand that fully, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you want to make sure you're with the people that A, are not going to use you for what you're doing, and B, that want you to just, you know, thrive and be whatever you want to be. Um, so, yeah, this has been a really cool chat. It really has. Thank you so much for your amazing questions. Oh, no worries. They really had my brain kind of thinking, getting challenged, <laughs> especially me kind of like, doing like minimal school work in quarantine my brain cells just had to work a little bit for that question but I hope I answered it well. <laughs> <laughs> so how is school work going for you? Is that in you flying through it? You've got a certain routine or what, what, what are you doing? Um, my mum is a very big person on routines. I think most parents are but my mum is a very <laughs> big person on routines. Um, so if I like ask her can I sleep in tomorrow she's like okay but you always need to go to bed not at like one o'clock in the morning you still need to go to bed like a decent time or like around nine o'clock so i was like okay fair enough um so i either like wake up um around like eight or like nine somewhere mm. around those times um yeah. otherwise if it's, it's like my relaxing day i just mm. want to sleep in i'll probably end up waking up at like 11 o'clock so yeah. it definitely changes um but otherwise when i have my breakfast get ready then i start doing school work um and i finish doing that at like around two mm. if i've have an interview like right in the morning then I'll obviously start doing my work a bit later so then I'll probably finish it around like 2.30 or around 3 o'clock just so that I'm still having that good time to do it and I'm still putting in the effort to do my work um but I feel that I felt like the first couple of weeks in quarantine and I started to get all this like school work um it was extremely overwhelming like my head was upside down I was very very stressed out I think my face like my skin broke out so much I could just kind of see myself just kind of like that stress just really showing on me um, just because of all this schoolwork. Um, I don't think that's ever really happened before. I think it just kind of like the whole new routine and then just me having to think about this kind of uncertainty towards when am I going to see my friends again? When am I going to see this teacher again? Or what if they don't reply back to me? Or what if I don't finish it in time? What would they do? What would be the consequences kind of thing? So I think there are so many like um answers or no questions I had that were unanswered so I think my stress level was definitely very high but I had to kind of go for it step by step so I think I'm very calm with it now on some days I, when I wake up and just I really do not want to do school work like, I just really do not want to I'm at home can I just lie in bed it's extremely tempting especially now that I'm at home um but I think I've just kind of learned to um focus on it and still keep my mental health as a priority I think that's very important you've just said that yes keep your mental health as a priority which i'm going to leave i'm going to ask two questions in regard to the same thing what do you do to relax to help nurture your mental health and as, as a 13 year old and what do you do to stay motivated on the things that are like oh massively massively don't want to do this so <laughs> first question what do you do to relax and what do you do to be motivated um, well, what do I do to relax? I literally just like either sleep, <laughs> either sleep, very good, um, or I just like end up like watching like Disney Plus or Netflix or something that's just kind of going to get my mind off of anything. Otherwise, um, funny enough, um, when I do like interviews, it really does help me relax because I'm interacting with other people, even though it's still virtually, but I'm still speaking to other people, I'm still learning about someone else. So I think that's really like therapeutic for me in a way, because I'm still speaking to someone even though they're not 
even though most of the time they're not interviewing me I'm interviewing them but I think definitely that is part of what helps me relax I'm like listening to music or cleaning up my room I'm a very odd 13 year old but when I need to clean up my room my mum just keep telling me you need to clean up your room because it is such a mess and it's like a bomb went off in here so I'm like <laughs> okay fair enough but then I wait for it um I wait for when I'm feeling stressed I wait when I'm feeling stressed and then I'm like okay so now I'm going to clean up my room listen to music because it's almost like reorganizing my emotions very mm. deep meaning behind it but I think it's very it really helps me I think my mum is like that as well so she was like I'm not going to clean this cupboard until it's a rainy day outside and then I'm just going to I'm just going to clear everything out and Actually, I was like okay you go and do that mum <laughs> but um I think that definitely helps me relax um in terms of staying more motivated yeah. um Hmm. When I'm doing like my schoolwork and I just really do not want to do it, or I have more work to do and I just finished like two tasks and I still have like how many more to do, mm. um, I either, like start listening to music because it just kind of helps me focus on it more. Mm. Um, so it's almost like instead of scrolling through TikTok, I'm listening to music, so I'm still getting that same reaction in a way. Um, or I listen to like motivational videos. So they help me feel more determined to kind of get on with my work. Otherwise, I just kind of have to think about that once I've done this, I can do it later. So if I um, don't want to edit this video right now, I'm like, well, I do need to edit this video right now because I'm doing it for this person and I need it by this time. So I need to do it now and then I can relax later or relax tomorrow. So I think you just kind of think about the end result is really important. And yes, somebody just commented, thanks for reminding me. Um, podcasts are really important. Um, <laughs> they really do help me focus as well because it's still somebody speaking, but then like they're giving you some kind of inspirational message behind it. And I think that definitely helps me focus more on my work, surprisingly, because listening to someone else speak, or like maybe my mum speaking to me when I'm doing my work, I just can't focus. But when I'm listening to like a podcast, a motivational video for some reason it makes me feel more determined so I'm not sure why it works that way but that would probably be my best ways or how I keep myself more motivated yeah 100% that's that's so cool I do that I listen to there's a chap called David Goggins so I don't know if you've heard of him he no. is <laughs> what, he's a big dog in the in the personal development space if you manage to catch him on impact theory um, by a guy called Tom Bell. Tom He's... Bill you. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do listen to his podcast, but I'm yeah. not too sure who you just mentioned, but I'll look it up afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, David Goggins, he's got a powerful story and it, he's he's a, he's so annoying. I hate him, but I love him at the same time. So I have him when I'm running. It's just like, I'm just going to do 3K today. And then he's talking in my ear. Not personally, I wish it was personally. Um, just, just going for a run and it's just like, oh, I've got to do 4K. Well, if I got to that lamppost, that'd be 5K. Oh, I've just got to, got to keep on going. You keep on just pushing. Just going to keep going, way. yeah. That's it. And the same with work as well. I'm the same as you with video editing. Oh my gosh, it's so mind numbing Very, and very I'm, long. Yeah. <laughs> very, very, very long. I mean, you know, because you do your videos on YouTube and now TikTok's come in. I've just kind of explored TikTok slightly. Um, I've got a few videos. I'm just trying to try a new trend. But it's so like, I've got to change my mindset. I've got to change this and I've got to do this and I've got to do this and I've got to do that. Mm. And I'm, with everything in life, I know, because Charles Darwin said it, everything in life, it's not the strongest or the most intelligent to survive. It's the most adaptable. So the more adaptable we are with obviously what's happening at the, in the world at the moment and the most adaptable we are with like our platforms, then the more we're going to thrive. Not survive, I don't like, I don't like survive, but thrive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so thank you, that's a good one, I like that one. So yeah, motivational music, motivational uh, podcasts and motivational uh, YouTubes, that's pretty cool. Um, and I am going to ask you one last question. What's your favorite food? Favourite food? Very random, love it though. Um, my favourite food is probably pizza, oh. like pepperoni pizza, but then when you have it with like the nice garlic dough balls from like Pizza Express, that's really nice. I also love sushi, um, like the salmon, like me and my mum like love fish, so if it's like mackerel or salmon, like we just love fish. <laughs> um, um, and then, very basic, but chicken nuggets so anything from mcdonald's you gotta love it i think i got like um me and my mum got um uber eats i think like last week and because i hadn't had it for such a long time 
it was just this most euphoric feeling eating these like chicken strips and mozzarella sticks from McDonald's for so long. <laughs> um, but I love different types of foods. To be honest, I'm, I'm quite a picky person when it comes to what I eat. If it's something that I haven't eaten before, I probably won't end up trying it unless I, unless I actually want to. Um, but probably my top favourite foods. And also, my mum makes this amazing like <laughs> chickpea and tofu curry, and it is delicious. And then you can ha you can have it with like garlic bread or naan bread. So I love I like lots of different foods, but that's probably like my top favourites. <laughs> I love that, mum. By the way, that 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 was supposed to be first. What she said then, the, the chickpea and tofu. Oh yes, was. yes. <laughs> Definitely was. Just saying. Um, <laughs> why is ice cream? There you go. Ice cream. Mm, it's very ice true. Cream. My favourite dessert. Or oh. the cookie dough ice cream from like Ben and Jerry's. Mm. Someone's winning today. That's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> that is a winner. Absolutely. 100%. Uh, well, Vanessa, I'm sure you've got a very, very active day today. I know you've got some more interviews to do in the, uh, in the afternoon, a bit later on in the evening. So before we do go, where can people find you? Um, so you can find me on all social medias obviously here on instagram it is inspiring vanessa um if you would like to listen to my podcast it's the inspiring vanessa show if you'd like to watch the um, amazon prime show the talk show it's also the inspiring vanessa show we have an instagram account um, for the show so you can follow that and you can kind of see what other guests we have um, my YouTube is Inspiring Vanessa, Twitter is Inspiring V10, and my TikTok is Inspiring V also, um, and then my website, which you can kind of get all the information at the same time, is www.inspiringvanessa.com. So guys, really easy, all platforms, Inspiring Vanessa, boom. And Very simple. Third at the beginning and show at the end, so yeah. You can't miss her. You can't miss her. And you wouldn't want it because I've had a delightful conversation with you today. Thank you. Um, so thank you so much. It's so refreshing to see um, somebody really fighting for their passions and just living what they want to live and just, you know, being unapologetic for themselves. So. Well, thank you so much for having me. Your questions were amazing again. Ah, uh, thank you very kindly. And hopefully, after that. lockdown is over, we can we can we can meet. I'd be well up for that. That'd be awesome. Me, me, and the two two Vs, Vanessa and Veronica. Yep. Yeah, Vanessa amazing. and Veronica. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Well, I can't wait. Um, I wish you a really, really cool, successful day. Thank you for all answering so eloquently, and I can't wait to catch you in the future. All right. I'll speak to you soon then. Bye. Take care. See you later, Vanessa. Bye. <laughs>